I want you to become a full-time housewife. And I followed his wish. However, my husband soon started yelling at me, and my mother-in-law began making snide comments every day. If I made even a slightly unhappy face, they would yell at me to leave the house. One day, I was abandoned on a dark mountain alone, and I thought, this could be it, the end of my life. Just as I was losing hope, a knight in shining armor appeared before my eyes, as if in a dream. My name is Whitney, a housewife in my 30s. I used to work as a regular employee like everyone else before becoming a full-time housewife after marrying my husband Brent. We used to split the household chores while working together, but one day, he told me he wanted me to become a full-time housewife. I don't want to do housework at all. Winnie, will you become a full-time housewife? I will earn enough for both of us. With those words from my husband, I resigned from my job. My husband had no experience living alone, and it took him time to learn how to do laundry, cleaning, and cooking. I thought it was okay for him to take time to adjust, since no one is perfect from the start. However, my husband seemed to have no intention of doing any housework at all. I was anxious about quitting my job, but I thought we could eventually have children, so I decided to focus on housework as my husband wished. At first, my husband was grateful to me, and I was happy to do housework for him. However, lately, I've just been sitting in a chair taking breaks, and my husband has been getting angry at me. Hey, why don't you do some housework? Haven't you finished washing the dishes yet? And the room is still messy. And so he began to nitpick and complain about everything. Being a housewife must be easy. You probably just lays around and take naps during the day, right? His constant complaints began to wear on me and I became fed up. Then I will quit being a housewife and get a job. Let's go back to sharing the household chores like we used to do. Even though I suggested that, my husband only responded with harsh words. Didn't I tell you that I will never do housework? Who do you think you are? Who do you think supports our living expenses? Working at a company is certainly difficult, but being a housewife is not easy either. He promised me that he would earn enough for both of us, but our income has remained stagnant for the past five years. I wasn't even given any money to manage because my husband believed that nothing good would come from giving money to a housewife. Every day, I was criticized and berated as a useless person and was forced to obey him. Over the years, my way of thinking became distorted. My husband is just trying to help me by pointing out my flaws. It's all my fault that I can't do the housework perfectly. Looking back now, I think I was completely brainwashed. But at that time, since I had little interaction with the outside world, and my husband was everything to me in our small household, I didn't realize what was happening. Then one day, my husband came home from work and made a sudden announcement. We're moving next month. So start preparing. My husband bought a new house without even consulting me. Wait, you bought a house without telling me? What? I don't need to consult you about it. You're just living under my roof. My husband continued and dropped another bombshell. My mother will also be living with us in the new house. This made me feel even more confused and shaken. I dislike my mother-in-law and only saw her a few times a year since she lived far away. However, during those short visits, 
she would bully me and say hurtful things about my personality. Wait, wait, wait! You said we weren't going to live with her. I protested, but my husband didn't care at all. The situation has changed, so just do as I say. Don't order me around and shut up. I didn't become a housewife because I wanted to. I did it because you asked me to. I wanted to retort like that, but when my husband shouted, my body froze and I couldn't say anything. Without being convinced, we moved to our new home. My mother-in-law had already arrived before us. As soon as she saw me, my mother-in-law started making obvious sarcastic comments to me. Oh, hi, Whitney. You're still as gloomy as ever. My husband didn't reprimand his mother, but instead said to me, "Mom and I are going out to eat, so stay here and unpack our stuff, and don't use the heating until we come back." As instructed, I unpacked desperately, while shivering in the cold. Life from then on was hell. My mother-in-law made me do household chores by giving me various instructions, and then making me do them all over again every time. And when my husband came home, she would report to him with a pack of lies about how I neglected the household chores and how hard she was working. Heather made me do all the housework again today, and not only that. She criticized my cooking and yelled at me. It was really scary. <laughs> my mother-in-law's eyes filled with tears, and she appealed to my husband. My husband believed everything his mother said, and started verbally attacking me. How could you do this to my mother? No, I never said anything like that. Everything she just said was what your mother did to me. I couldn't stay quiet, so I desperately tried to argue back, but my body was trembling. My husband patted his mother's back and glared at me. Shut up! You made my mom cry like this. Who do you think has been supporting you all this time, huh? Then my husband yelled at me and grabbed my arm. Dragging me out of the house, he ordered me to get into the car and forced me into the passenger seat. In the back seat, my mother-in-law was inexplicably beaming with joy. As my husband drove away from the town, we left the city behind us. Where are we going? I asked, but my husband ignoring me the whole time. We must have driven for at least two hours. When I realized. The car suddenly stopped in the middle of a dark mountain. Get out! Huh? I asked, not understanding my husband's words. I'm telling you to get out. Why are you doing this in a place like this? Shut up! If you can't obey me and my mother, then get out. Don't you ever come back? Are you leaving me stranded here? No, I desperately held onto my seatbelt, but my husband forcefully threw me out of the car. Wait! Don't leave me here, please, please! My husband and mother-in-law watched me scream in desperation, with grins on their faces from inside the car. Then they drove away and left me stranded on the pitch black mountain road, with no street lights. I was shaking with fear, with no phone on me. I desperately made my way down the mountain, determined to find someone to help me. Despite my efforts, I kept falling, and eventually I became unable to move. My lips trembled, and I went numb in my limbs. As I felt completely hopeless, I saw a car's headlights in the distance. The car stopped for a while. Probably observing my situation, and then a man got out of the car. Hey, are you okay? 
What happened? Why are you dressed like that in this place? And you're covered in blood. As I looked down, I realized that I was barefoot and still wearing my apron. I explained my situation to the man while fighting back tears of relief from finally encountering someone. Then the man put the suit jacket he was wearing over my shoulders. I'll take you home. Don't worry. But should we go to the hospital first? Though I felt sorry, I decided to have him drop me off at my parents' house in a neighboring town. I felt like he was a godsend at that moment, as I never would have gotten into a stranger's car under normal circumstances. When my parents saw me in my current state, they were shocked and cried as I explained my situation. They repeatedly thanked the man who brought me home and planned to thank him properly later. Exhausted both physically and mentally, I couldn't bring myself to contact my husband and my mother in law and ended up staying with my parents. My father helped me find a lawyer for the divorce proceedings. However, just as I was about to take action myself, my husband and mother in law barged into my parents' house. Heather, I know you were there. Come out. The lawyer contacted me. I'll never allow a divorce. I could hear my husband's yelling from outside the house. He was kicking the front door and twisting the doorknob with all his might. My father said he would handle it, but I felt like I had to do what I had to do. I asked my father to call the police if something happened and open the front door. My mother in law and husband started berating me, telling me to apologize and calling me a bad wife. I couldn't make any sense of what they were saying. Why should I apologize? Finally, I felt like I had woken up from my husband's brainwashing. My life is mine. I won't let them control me anymore. I gathered my courage and started talking. There's no way I'm apologizing. You're the ones who left me in the middle of a pitch black mountain and treated me like a garbage by telling me never to come back. I just did what you wanted, didn't I? Now, please go away. They probably didn't expect me to talk back, but they were taken aback by my rebellious attitude. However, they soon turned red and started yelling. Who do you think you are? I'm your husband, damn it. That's right. You were just someone being supported by my son. You were nothing. It's no use trying to reason with these two people who were making a fuss. Then, someone tapped me on the shoulder from behind. It's quite noisy here, isn't it? When I turned around, Robert was there. Yes, he was the man who helped me that day even though we were complete strangers. Today, we were having a meal with him as a way of thanking him for his kindness. Suddenly, he popped his head out of the front door and said, Keep it down. You don't want to disturb the neighbors. Then, upon saying that, Robert looked at my husband and said, Isn't that you, Brent? I was surprised to hear him say my husband's name. But my husband was even more taken aback. What are you doing here? Why are you? My husband pointed at Robert and stuttered. You, you're the company president. My mother-in-law looked at him with an incredulous expression. I see. I've always wondered what kind of person would leave his wife in the middle of the mountain like that. I never would have guessed it was you, Brent. Robert looked at my husband with a difficult expression. My husband was speechless and Robert continued. This is not something that can be dismissed as a joke. My husband and mother-in-law fell silent as the sharpness of his tone. With one wrong move, it could have been a matter of life and death. 
Robert continued with a harsh voice. What were you thinking? Leaving your wife stranded in the middle of such a dark mountain. Th that was just, just a joke. Or rather, a lesson. Or... My husband was sweating profusely on his forehead and stammering excuses. Upon seeing this, Robert let out a big sigh. Silence! Enough! <sighs> you need to take responsibility for your actions. Brent, your work attitude and performance also has been a problem for quite some time now. I can't have someone like you at my company. I'm sorry. I never should have done something like that, so... No. You're fired. You don't have to come to the office anymore. Upon this sudden announcement, my husband trembled with a pale face. Are you kidding me? And what's up with the president being here in the first place? You guys are cheating on me, aren't you? That's right. You two are secretly meeting up and trying to set me up, right? Y yes Yes, that's right. You two are cheating on him. Pay us compensation. As even the man who saved my life was being blamed, I couldn't help but feel my blood boil. Enough already. Shame on you both. Don't you dare show your faces again. Get out of here. Right now. With an expression I had never shown before. I yelled at my husband and mother-in-law as they left. Whoa, Whitney. That was an amazing voice you have there. You can do it if you try. As he said that, Robert laughed and applauded. I felt the mixture of embarrassment and joy and blushed as a result. Our interaction continued after that day. My husband, who had not come to work since then, ended up resigning on his own without being fired. His industry is relatively small, and rumors have spread that he is that kind of person who would abandon his wife and leave her behind, making it difficult for him to find a new job. Naturally, he had to sell the newly built house that he bought to live with my mother-in-law, as the loan repayments were delayed. Now he lives with his mother in a small, run-down apartment. I formally divorced him and now live alone near my parents' house. Today, Robert is coming to my house. I don't know what he likes about me, but he has been good to me since that instant. I am attracted not only the fact that he saved my life, but also to his kindness and sincerity. Today is our first dinner date and I am waiting for him while making roast beef, which was his request. It is the beginning of a new life. We will be happier together from now on, nurturing this happiness we found after those difficult days.